videotaping and I need to inform everyone that this meeting is being videotaped um, for public use. Um, would, let's see, I see a few new people, so I would I would appreciate if we can have anyone on this first and second row, um, starting with Ms. Ellis, to just introduce yourself, because um, all the others have introduced themselves um, already. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> we have Glad to have you right here. We have Ellen O'Neill, our legal counsel for the company. Anytime we have council meetings, we're going to have She she actually jumped out of the camera. <laughs> but uh, um, anytime we have advisory council meetings, we always have that legal representation. It's the part middle of me, so she's here for us. <laughs> All right. Well, I would like to go ahead and proceed on with the update to the Board of Health meeting and the proposed amendments. And Ms. Merriman, are you the one on the that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, as y'all know, y'all worked really hard on the set of regulations we talked about earlier. All of you are to be commended <coughs> on that. And, you know, regulations are something that are forever changing. The practice of child care is changing. From what y'all started out 10 years ago or 15 years ago, you have come a long way. I remember the big 2000s that are, are the, the big set of change. It occurred in 2003, actually. Actually, I think it's from one to three. It took about that long. And in essence, this set of regulations has taken just as long to get through. The Child Care Advisory Council has been working on it at least a year and a half, maybe a little bit longer. But the regulations that y'all brought forth did go before the Board of Health on July the 10th, and they were approved. They were on the consent agenda. They were approved. They were refiled with the Secretary of State on August the 16th. By law, that means the regulations go into effect 30 days after they've been filed. So that will put them effective August the 16th. I, I double checked that date this morning just to see when the Secretary of State actually uploaded it. So it will make them effective on the 16th. Now, as we went before the board and in the last couple of days, just before taking these to the board, there was an area in our regulations that came to our attention that is actually no longer applicable. And that is on section, I, got, I have some copies that I would like to pass out just so everybody <coughs> can pass it. When we started talking about outdoor playground area, there was a lot of conversation regarding the transformers and how they were measured as far as what, what the department set out to do was ensure the safety of the children, ensuring that the playground area was safe. But as we got near the board, this came up as a comment, and it caused us to go back and research this area, which we appreciate all comments. As we always tell y'all, we miss things, and sometimes the way things, what was applicable at one time possibly was applicable at another time. And at the time this was actually put in, I think that was probably something that was in the national standard. However, since it did come as a comment to us and a concern regarding the way it was actually put that the hazards would be measured horizontally parallel to the ground. That came forth to us and we did. A, there was a lot of discussion just a couple of days before the, the regs went through. But in order to make the change prior to the board meeting, that meant you would have to pull the entire set of regulations really back and go through the whole filing process which would delay everything else going through again. So what we asked the providers that had a concern let us bring this back to the advisory council and this is the department. The department wants to recommend that we remove the language of how this shall be measured. Everything else will read as is. And to our knowledge, we have no providers that are outside compliance with it as is, but to remove the language measured horizontal parallel to the ground. That sentence that was put in, that just, that basically it was the same language but it told how we would measure it. And when you do that and look at it, often a lot of these transformers, I think, are on poles. I think Mr. Col Mr. Uh, Simpkins and some of them have talked to the electrical company. The old transformers of many years ago that were the major concern contained oil. When those, those transformers exploded, if they were in the playground area for the children, you stood a great risk of the children getting burned. That was the initial reason for putting 
this language in there. In talking to Energy and Mississippi Power, they have no more of the transformers. To their knowledge, they have no of the, quote, old transformers out there that contain the oil anymore. They've gone to these new transformers, just like our electronic uh, media has improved. Their services have improved also. So really, the language for this is obsolete. It's not needed anymore. So the department would like to ask the Child Care Advisory Council about removing the wording measured horizontally parallel to the ground from the language. My question regarding um, this is where where did the, um, is the 30 feet number, the number that Entergy said, or was, where did that number come from? Okay. Uh, this was back in 2000, I believe 2001, mm -hmm. when it first appeared. And as I recollect, that we called up, uh, we called people at the International uh, uh, Electrical Code people in Birmingham, and we also contacted the Entergy and stuff like that, and, and that was their their suggestion, uh, you know, and just as a side, I've, I've witnessed, witnessed one explode, so, you know, it, it did explode in, in one of those oil fields. Also, I had the PCBs in it, the cancer causing, so that then if it was over your, over your, um, uh, playground, it would contaminate the playground. And under new rules now, you'd have to go in and have uh, the, uh, the, the get rid of it, which means probably digging out all your playground areas to get rid of the, this oil, contaminated oil. But again, as, as, as Ms. Behrman stated, uh, that appears not to be a concern now, but that was the basis of it. And that would went all the way back to 2001. And, and quite frankly, what was is there was a concern about how it's going to be measured. It was brought up, and that's why it was a, actually a clarification of how we would measure it. Because if it's 30 feet above the playground, it's filled with oil, it's right in the middle of the playground, it's a non functional uh, 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 rule for the protection of the children. Because if it blows up, it's going to get all over the ground and everything. That's why we wanted it 30 feet off the playground area. But again, like like I said, it's since it, since uh, the newest uh, information has come available to us, then that that uh, language is no longer necessary. Okay, one more question. <laughs> because you know this, we we're talking about this one wording, but I'm reading the whole sentence so I can see. And um, are there any barriers that can be constructed? Because I'm looking at this about the railroad tracks, and I'm thinking of a specific place that I've been to that I really think they're really too close to the railroad tracks. But you know, the railroad tracks are elevated, so there might be they might be 30 feet up. But um, are there any barriers that um, that centers can construct that would take away this? If, a, if a, a train derails, oh. you're out of luck. It's not. You know, it's just it's coming through the whole facility. Hopefully, it's closed at three o'clock in the morning when it does. Uh, we also the, the, some of the rules you have, just like with the the uh, with the with the, the swimming pools, it requires a six foot fence. Mm -hmm. Now we've actually even had uh a facility that was downtown jackson i don't even know if it's still in uh, in, in operation this is years ago that a car got out of control and ran through the fence of the playground area at a very busy intersection and we went to them and we had them construct a, an additional fence six feet from the previous fence in case it, yeah, in case it happened again it probably would be a hard for it to get through two fences you know, and, and they did that because, I mean, it, you know, they saw the damage. It came in, hit playground equipment and everything else. So and that's years ago. We haven't had that again. But, uh, but so if, if uh, we have a requirement that if a, if a, um, on the playground, the uh, air compressor for, for the, uh, the air conditioner, 
you have to have a barrier around it because we had a child pick up a screwdriver and found on it and dropped it into the fan of the air conditioning system. It stopped the fan, it was all running, started on fire, burned up everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so those things, those are safety precautions. If we see things like that or that are a hazard, we give suggestions of how to either, either remove the hazard or protect the, ch the children from the hazard. And, and so that's, that's really what we have to do. But there's so many different things that can happen on, on the playground. Um, you know, gas mains, you know, you have to block those off because children will beat on them and things like that. Like Colleen, the, the 30 foot, I mean, I can I understand the transport. I mean, I think they stopped making all transport back in 2006 or seven. But high voltage wires, power lines, high voltage to me when I was in that business, 72,000 volts, 7,200 coming to the house or something. It, it's, it's a, above 240. Okay. Uh, typical, your typical line from from the, the pole is a 220 volt, uh, 240 volt line. And they split it off to get your 110 and stuff like that. But, but you have to have a 220 for your dryers and, and, and your air conditioner and some of those. So that, that those are not considered high voltage. It's anything that's over two. And the thing is, those, those lines are over 240 volts. You can tell what they are. Those are cables. They're, you know, I mean, they're they're big things. And mostly from what this talks is, it's going to be more places that are in um, towns around other businesses or manufacturing facilities might have issues with that. But neighborhood centers might not have any issues with high voltage. Sure. But and, and we really haven't been noting a problem with it. It's just in our clarifying it, mm -hmm. in clarifying the language. Basically, I think we probably created what could have been a problem, and that wasn't the intent of the agent. What is the process, um, if this is voted on that that language is removed, where would that go as far as how it's presented to the Board of Health? Okay, we've got two options here. Mm -hmm. First thing is, if this is the only item, we can definitely, it will go in the minutes that the, the Advisory Council is in agreement to have this removed, and it's something that we can remove the next time we make a change, but we will not be enforcing it, you know, and we have it as a show on our minutes. So we could do it that way, or we can present this back to the board, refile the whole set of regs with that one change. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, those are your two options. So we've had two options of discussion. Yeah. We'll need a motion to have the wording removed from um, line 412 that says measure horizontally parallel to the ground. Um, and a second, and then we can discuss before we have a vote. I'm so is there a motion? Remove, okay. remove line 412. Okay. Measure Mary horizontal Neville. parallel to the ground. Mary Neville says make a motion. Do we have a second? A second. And Christy Wilson has seconded. Okay. Is there any discussion on this wording? I got a question. Uh, we're talking about the, the uh, transformers with the oil base. That's what we're talking about. We're talking right? about all transformers. All, right. yeah, all transformers. So you're saying to the daycare centers, if it's if the Department of Energy, uh, the energy company, saying it's okay if you don't have the oil base in it, but if you still have one within a certain period of time, you still got to get it moved. No. no. no okay. Uh, so let me, I would like to clarify um, what the regs have said always 30 feet. And then there was a little addendum added in that clarified what 30 feet meant parallel to the ground. And so all we're talking about is removing that clarification line because they said it's a moot point as far as elect the electrical services say. So we're just removing a line that was added in as something to clarify what they meant by 30 feet. And those who already at this point, and the regulations been, we already have, already have and they have that there. situation. Okay. They've been doing it. The pole's been there for 20 years. Will well, it be if it's always been there? if it's always been there, then yeah. Okay. I mean, it's 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 the same inspector that comes every year. It's like I think just confirmed with uh, Mr. Simpkins. As far as he's aware, we don't have any facility that is out of compliance with the way it was previously written prior to us measure, putting that little few words of language in. 
So if you were in compliance prior to, you should be in compliance now. And Vicki, can I say something? Yes, sir. Even yeah. without any change to the regulations, the department has the authority to grant, I'm not going to be undertaken, the department has the authority to grant a waiver, um, a grant, or they can do that unofficially with a regulation anyway. Or not unofficially, but they can do that under the regulations anyway. Yeah. And um, I think the board would be amenable to that. I, you know, after the board meeting, we had, I went back and went online to check and miss it. They don't think they have any more calls. Yeah. Oh, no, we I, did some I, telephone I, calls. Because I guess the, the frame of the, the, the proposal was for the oil yes, since so you don't have it. I mean, you shouldn't even been in there. Well, we should have put it in there, we, but it, it yeah. already changed, and we haven't catched it. It changed. Okay. Quite frankly, what occurred is a previous attorney said we need to clarify that rule because he had gotten call a call from a person regarding what does the 30 feet mean, and that's why that was done, and that that. And this goes back for a year and a half because they just, you know, they just got approved. That wording was approved by our previous attorney when it was put in the regs. But the additional information that's come to light since then, which I was not aware of, but the, 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 then the, we started doing some more research on it, that they, uh, the uh, uh, MPNL, unless there's an absolute um, anomaly that we don't have any more oil field transformers in Mississippi. Now it doesn't say one doesn't exist that they forgot about, who knows, but you know, to our, the best of the knowledge of the people that are supposed to know this, they say we don't have it. Okay. Okay. Well, we have a motion on the floor. Um, are we ready okay. to vote? Mm -hmm. Um, okay, well, by a show of hands, um, let us affirm um, the removal of line 412 in the parenthesis from the new regulations. Can't be so the whole line. It's just got to well, be those, the, the highlighted those highlight words, words, words that, that are in parentheses. parentheses. Okay, so, um, for affirmation, raise your hand. Okay, any opposed? No, it's unanimous um, to remove that wording from the... And the, the, the department will work with the legal department and with management department of health to see whether they want to go ahead and refile it as moved or whether we just want to hold it in a minute and by policy we will not be enforcing it. You know, until until other changes are made, you know, because there may be other things, you know, there is some conversation on some other areas. So until we sit down and look at all of it and make the change at one time, which would be easier on the department go with what legal advice is. Okay. okay um, as far as the update on the, the regulations, is that it? Yeah. Okay. Is there any other? So to clarify, we should be using these regulations that have amended effective um, August the 16th. They should go into effect. Yeah. And are these already available online? Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. No, they're not because they have not become final okay. final yet. Okay. To, to clarify what was said is once it's filed with the Secretary of State, there's a 30-day stay of proceedings. They can't they become effective 30 days after the final adoption. So August 16th. So there's a 30-day window, and I don't know what the, the, what it's they do or anything, but that's 30 days after they're finally filed that they become effective. And we're preparing them to get them, you know, to get them up out of the line. Normally we will post it right there at the 16th because we don't want someone feeling like we are coming in and going to be holding them accountable to mm -hmm. something that they still have a few days to continue working on. Some of these things will require providers to put a little bit of time in bringing their facility up to, you know, compliance, but it does give that time. As far as new business, if there are any other new business to bring before the council. You want to tell us? Clarification. We don't want to talk to not understand. That they're being video. Who did she ask me to do? She, you're talking to her. Are you talking to her?
Huh. Sorry. I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think you told me that. <laughs> you need to uh, okay. Yeah, am, am I supposed to? All right. I'm not sure. Okay. I can't get uh, there. Well, I know it's okay, later. I it may not be the time. <coughs> come in, but since we're in the new business, I, I would welcome any business to be brought before even um, from the gallery. Is as part of the conversation that would occur on the day of the board meeting and a couple of days before, there was also some conversation regarding grandfathering. Mm -hmm. okay. And what they're talking about is grandfathering the measurements of the facility for what is current as of now. <coughs> and, uh, and I think that's the language that you're Miss, I didn't realize when you came in you were Miss Sewell's daughter, but Miss Sewell was going to come and speak regarding possible grandfathering and just have a discussion. In my talking with her a little bit earlier, though, she did mention that she might want to put that conversation off until the next board meeting. So, you know, <laughs> I think that is a great if you're, you know, if you're prepared to speak on mm -hmm. it, but what it is is there were some concerns from some providers and you know, they have an interest in what the uh, measurements of the facility are today in having their facility or having all facilities grandfathered at that point so that in case measurements change in the future that they would not be impacted and they wanted to bring it forth to the advisory council for discussion. So like I said, I don't have Ms. Rasul here to lead that discussion though and she, she gave me the wording, I, I, and Jamie, I think, she's, who, who did she speak with? Uh, I think they, they worked on the wording of it. Uh, she spoke with Ron Aldridge with the governor's uh, committee, a small business advisory council. And I believe the Mississippi Federation for Small Business, is that correct? So, when I first read that, I read it as they wanted to grandfather back to what was it, 92 or whatever, to the whole measure of the building. And we're not going to go back to that. That's what my. Then somebody said, no, they just wanted to grandfather in the existing. I understood it was the square existing. Square footage, room and for I, room. You know, I, I understood existing. And that's something that would be probably something that's open for discussion. It still needs brought before the advisory council. It still needs discussed within the advisory council. I, I really think that to, to help us, it needs to be put down very succinctly in writing to us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we can study what they want. Because, you know, it's just like the 30 feet thing. Mm -hmm. It's like I read it one way and somebody else reads it the other. But we, you know, and, and that's why we had to have a clarification. So if, if it's written out what exactly uh, is being proposed, then we can sit there and look at it and we can ask the, the, the author and say, now, do you mean this and this, or do you mean this, this, and this? We and have, you know, we and then worked. we can write it and check that and, and see what we, what we have for a final document to be, uh, be considered. Ms. Sewell did talk to us at the day of the board meeting and there were other concerns regarding this, you know, other conversation as well. I did take it that she was meaning current. Uh, we have, we've discussed some language that might work if the advisory council was amenable to such, uh, but I think it's a discussion that needs to be made with the advisory council. It needs to be brought forth to y'all in an open discussion here on the, at the table before it uh, goes anywhere. So that's why she did indicate that she might want to wait till the next meeting to possibly, I knew she was running late. Mm -hmm. And so I had kind of tabled it in the back of my mind to see if she got here, but uh, she did want to wait. And we probably need maybe a little bit further clarification regarding yeah. the real intent of that. She, she has it. Oh, since I, like I was at the Capitol Museum, so y'all forgive me. So yeah. I, and so my car is in the shop. <laughs> I got dropped off. So <laughs> I got an email, and I'm trying to read it from here. So. <laughs> 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 
But in all honesty, it, there is confusion still on possibly what the intent was. I think you guys need to table it till she can present. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, I'm agreeable to that. It yeah. looks, um, from what we're, we're already discussing, it looks like a future issue if we ever have any changes in um, 